You're watching, watching Dave Dave Graham's Sports Report. Do it one more time. In five, don't look up. Five, four, three, two, one. You're watching David Graham's Sports Report. When you call for just any ambulance service, you never know what you might get. But when you call Vinyl Care at 423-562-9370, you'll get an experienced staff, experienced and professional people who know what the word emergency really means. Don't just trust anyone. You do have a choice when it comes to ambulance service in this area. 562-9370. They were everything we thought they were. They came out running and they did just that as they scored on their first possession to get our attention. Hello everybody, David Graham in here with your sports report. Bell County scored first but couldn't convert the two point conversion. We got the ball and Josh Slay hit Seth Roberts in the end zone to answer the Bobcat score. Only Gustavo Rosas hit the extra point to give us a 7-6 lead. The game got canceled over an hour as lightning was all around the area. When they started back, Bell County got the ball, but our defense stiffing. They played very well. We got the ball back and we scored again as Josh Lay hit Phillips for a 29-yard score and we're up 14-6. Bobcats woke up though. They ran the kickoff across the 50 into Cougar territory and get this, with a personal foul penalty on us, it moved the ball inside the R30. Then on a face mask penalty on us, the Bobcats found themselves at our nine yard line. Our defense played very well, but on fourth and goal, Landon Reese had good coverage on the receiver, Asher kid out there. He tipped the pass, so he thought he tipped it away, but Asher was able to grab it in the air and run it in for another Bell County score. They executed the two-point conversion to tie the game up at 14 all. One big play in the second half, Landon Reese caught a pass over the middle, split the defenders and read it in for 57 yards to give us a 28-22 lead. And we tried an onside kick, which they recovered and it gave them good field position. And deep in our territory, what looked like a big cougar stop, we got called for defensive holding and they scored. It went like that for most of the second half. After a few miscues, like they were able to turn the game around and wound up scoring the last touchdown to make your final. Bell County 41, Camel County High School 31. What should have been a very good game, it could have very well been a Cougar win. Take away the mistakes and we could have won this game. But it is what it is and Bell County is just what we thought they were. Very good. Now we'll be at home again next week against Carnes for our last home game of the season. And then we got one more after that at Oak Ridge. Now here's the region standings after Friday's games. Farragut still sits atop the region at six and one. Oak Ridge is seven and one, but Farragut beat Oak Ridge in within the region, so they're in first place. Camel County sits in third with a 500 record. They're four and four. Clinton is three and five. Lenore City is two and four, and Carnes is bringing up the rear at two and five. They will be our opponent this Friday night at El Hope Dawson Stadium. Okay, here's some other scores for you. Lenore City and Anderson County High School, our neighbors to the south, were both off this Friday and they didn't play. And they'll be in action next week, though. Don't worry, fans. Here's some other scores, though. From Thursday, Christian Academy beat Clinton 42-21. to Carnes beat Powell 63-42, to also on Thursday. And Oak Ridge beat McMinn County 24 to nothing on Thursday. Now to Friday, Austin East beat Union County 72 to nothing. Bell County, of course, beat Campbell County. Bradley Central beat Dobbins Bennett 56 to 42. You better get up there and help my Jim Bunch. They need you. Elizabethan beat Claiborne County 62 to 14. Greenback beat Coalfield 14 to 2. Hardin Valley beat Jefferson County 24 to 14. Harriman beat Midway 39 to 15. Kings Academy beat Concord Christian big time 69 to nothing. Knox Central beat Knox Halls 48 to 14. I thought this would be a good football game, but apparently I was wrong. Knox Grace beat Wartburg Central 49 to 14 in a very good ball game here. Knox West beat Farragut 9 to 7. Oakdale beat Sunbright 14 to 13. Another good ball game. And uh, Blue Devils they lost to Oneida 21 to nothing. Rockwood beat Oliver Springs 49 to 17. Science Hill beat William Blunt 45 to 8. Seymour beat Scott County 46 to 20. 
and South Green beat our neighbors to the east, Cumberland Gap Panthers 41-6. Come and see what's cooking at the diner on Jack's Pro Pie. Coming soon, a garden fresh salad bar. And of course, we have those half pound freshly ground beef hamburgers. And of course, all you can eat specials. And don't forget, we have Pastry Chef making all those delicious pies and cakes daily. And that's what's cooking at the diner on Jack's Pro Pie. Hope to see you soon. 423-566-4708. It was a cold, blustery day at Archer Sports Complex. Of course, it was a cold, blustery day everywhere else, too. But our Campbell County Youth Football Association had their homecoming over there this past Saturday. After the boys got through escorting the pretty little girls around, they got busy with the task of beating the Chargers of South Clinton, who came in with thoughts of wrecking the day. Well, our JV Hoppers Cougars dispelled those notions with a 30 to nothing thumping of the Chargers. I was your announcer for this game. Well, for all four, three games, I should say. This game, and I called Eli Lawson's name a lot. The Cougars broke out early with Eli running one from in about 99 yards for our first score, and it just snowballed after that. Caden Wright, McKinley Robbins, Ethan Hess were among the stars on this day. I called their name a lot. In the Hoppers game, we went an entire game with neither team giving up anything and by the end of regulation it was tied no one had scored gavin cox reed chapman and josh pierce tyrus mcculley and quarterback sean sterrett couldn't get anything going and they lost in overtime six to nothing in the nightcap the cutters game it was another defensive battle and it looked like these two were going to go into overtime as well as the game was tied at six all but late in the game the cougars were driving downfield with devin jones at quarterback on the three-yard line, Will Lester ran the ball into pay dirt for the go-ahead score, and they also converted the two-point conversion to make it 14-6 Cougars. On the next kickoff, it was fumbled, and who came up with the ball? That man again, number 43, Will Lester. And then it was just a matter of Devin Jones, the quarterback, taking the knee and run out the clock. So many came up big in this game for the Cougars. Mason Shanks, Caleb Muncy, Dalton Brown and so many more. They will be on the road next week at Union County. All three of our Cougar teams have already qualified for the playoffs, by the way. And most are betting that they'll be in the championship games, but we'll get we'll have to wait on that when that time comes. As I said, though, it was homecoming, and we certainly want to congratulate all the pretty little beauties and those handsome young men who participated. And I want to thank our broadcast partner, Jolton Joe Monroe, for covering for old David as I was doing the LA Cruisers car show. The Ball Farm and Events Center is going to host the 5th Annual Christmas Gift Show this year. It's going to be split into two shows in order to accommodate more vendors. They have decided to offer two shows. Twice the chance, the opportunity to shop, purchase items from local businesses, craftsmen, and artisans. The first show will be held on Thursday, December the 3rd and Friday, December the 4th from 4 to 9 p.m. nightly. The second show will be held Monday, December the 7th and Tuesday, December the 8th from 4 to 9 p.m. nightly and vendors must set up both nights to participate. Now the vendors at show number two will be different from vendors from show number one. And vendors can call Jamie Ball at 423-871-1900 for more information on signing up and we'll remind you they're on a first come first serve basis so you better hurry up and call Jamie. And I'm going to tell you something folks. You know, you might say, well, December is just a long ways away. Well, just think of this. After Halloween, Christmas is right around the corner. Think of that. Friday, October the 30th, the deadline to sign your little one up for the Camel County Youth Basketball League, which plays at East, West, and the Rec Center Gym below the library. Now, if your child is 5 or through 15 years old, you can sign them up. Monday through Friday, 8 to 4 p.m. and 9 to 1 on Saturdays. As I said, the deadline is Friday, October the 30th. So hurry up and sign your little one up for Campbell County Youth Basketball. And oh, by the way, David Graham covers that as well. Now, they have already had their coaches meeting. It was October the 7th, but if you want to coach, you still may be able to. Just call the Rec Center office at 423-562-9424. I want to remind you, though, they do require a background check because you're dealing with little ones. John Carroll had their first fishing event of the year this past Saturday. 
we couldn't get up there and we got no word on who won but we'll get all that from John and get all the details for you we do know though they had 29 boats and lots of winners and we just don't know who they who they are but like I said we'll get with John find out you know John does an outstanding job with these kids also we have two very good high school fishing teams as well both Campbell County High School and Jellico alrighty that's a real good look at today's sports I'm gonna be around somewhere today this afternoon covering some elementary school basketball and I hope I see you out somewhere you guys stay tuned there's a whole lot more to come right here on WLAF